Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John Diard. I'm gonna talk about an amazing study on how stress can actually impact our blood sugar levels. And we know that high blood sugar levels affect more, almost half the American population. It's the epidemic of our time. Um, and we know that it's linked to heart-related concerns, metabolic issues, cholesterol issues, a thing called glycation, which is when the extra sugar in your blood sticks to the protein in your blood, it clumps and they find that to be the smoking gun of cellular degeneration linked to age-related cognitive decline, uh, heart concerns, you know, arthritic age, you know, issues. I mean, basically, any type of degeneration, they link back to this glycation, these that are called glycation end products, where proteins and sugars stick together in your blood. And that's measured actually by your A1C test, which is why it's always good to keep that A1C in the low fives or the under, the under five because that's the actual measure of glycation. It's also, you know, they, they, they calculate that to be an average blood sugar number, but what's really neat about it is that you have a low A1C. Even if you have a high fasting glucose sugar, you're still actually not, you're still in okay shape because you're not glycating into cellular damage, which is sort of the key. So they did studies and they found that when you're stressed out, your blood sugar levels go up. Sort of does make sense. But what happens when you're stressed out is the body produces a chemical to unstress you, to de-stress you, called GABA, GABA gamma aminobutyric acid, which is a neurotransmitter produced in your gut, in your liver, in your, and in your brain. And it's an inhibitory molecule or neurotransmitter, which means that it actually calms you down. So the more GABA you take, the better you sleep, the more less anxiety you have. So people sell GABA as pills. It's a supplement that are sold because it actually helps suppress and sedate the nervous system, which is kind of cool because um, it works really well. And a lot of people, as they get older, don't produce as much GABA. But this new study they published just very recently found that the GABA has sort of a double-edged sword to it, that when you produce this GABA in response to stress, that actually sedates the nervous system and calms you down from the stress. It also sedates brainwave activity or brain activity, and the body's response to that is to guess what? Increase blood sugar. So all of a sudden, this chemical for stress turned your dial down and, and sedated your brain function, and then all of a sudden the body says, whoa, this is bad. Metabolic activity is down, or we need energy. So the body says, we gotta increase blood sugar. And that's the new understanding of the mechanism for higher blood sugar. So, so we have to figure out ways to de-stress ourselves without having to produce this neurotransmitter, which is like the emergency vehicle coming in and putting out the fire. We got to figure out a way to do that. Well, the best way to do it has been shown to be yoga, breathing, and meditation. All of them have been shown to, guess what, lower blood sugar. Uh, meditation has been shown in study after study after study to lower blood sugar. Um, meditation yeah, actually has the ability to calm the nervous system and allow the body to self-regulate and allow the body to handle stress more like water off a duck's back as opposed to being impacted by the stress and having to do stress recovery. Yoga, breathing, Ayurveda, meditation, I would call them stress prevention techniques because they help the body not respond to the stress as a fight or flight degenerative emergency response. So you don't have to break the body down and then do stress you know, recovery from that stress because you never break the body down in the first place, right? We have all these you know, stress reduction techniques. By definition, means we incur it, now we gotta reduce it. But Ayurveda is like, no, no, no. This is a lot more on the idea of stress prevention techniques because when you do yoga, breathing, meditation regularly, you actually don't allow the body to respond to that, what was a stressor, as a stress, to trigger the GABA, to sedate the brain, and the brain's response to that is increased blood sugar, which becomes chronic, and that creates a lot of issues related to weight gain, obesity, fatty liver issues, um, and metabolic issues, high cholesterol, and all that stuff, which we know is really bad, right? So those are all the things that happen. Now, interesting in this journey, as I was reading this article, I was like, you know, what about an herbal adaptogen? And there's one of the most well-studied herbal adaptogen maybe in the world uh, is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha has sort of transcended Ayurveda. It's become like it's on TV now. They sell it. And what ashwagandha does, which was really interesting in the study that, uh, that I found, is it actually increases GABA, right? So it's one of the ways its mechanism for increasing GABA or helping us handle stresses increases GABA. But what's unique about 
the ashwagandha is a study said it specifically did not sedate or slow down the brain function. So the ashwagandha increased the GABA to help calm the nervous system from stress, but it didn't sedate the brain function. And in the study that I was mentioning, it was the sedation of the brain function that triggered the raise of the rising of blood sugar in response to that GABA response. So ashwagandha was able to figure out a way to give you the energy that you need, but not sedate you to a place where the body felt need to replace that that antidote, that sedation, or replace the energy with more blood sugar, which explains why ashwagandha has been studied to, of course, lower blood sugar. It's been studied to help regulate healthy levels of cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL levels. It's been shown to help health, healthily remove the fat accumulation from your liver. All the things that are side effects of high blood sugar, or obesity, and fatty liver issues, and cardiovascular issues and high cholesterol and all that happens, which is really neat. And one of the really cool mechanisms about ashwagandha, which is also a very new study that just came out, is it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. So ashwagandha not only works as an adaption for your adrenals and for your body's cellular response to stress, but it also works at the level of the brain function. It literally crosses the blood-brain barrier, and actually that may be how it works more intimately with you know, allowing the GABA to be produced to calm the nervous system down, but not allow cellular or brain sedation and a decrease in brain function, which then the body has to re respond to that. So anyway, I thought it was just super interesting, more motivation, we should be do yoga, breathing, meditation every single day. Um, and of course, you know, regular exercise is really key. Uh, I would highly recommend breathing through your nose when you exercise because that keeps you from going into the fight or flight, break your body down to build yourself up stress, which is important. And then of course, think about ashwagandha as, a, an, as an adaptogen to help your body cope with stress on so many levels from blood sugar to liver congestion, fatty liver issues, to triglyceride levels, to, um, to obesity and weight gain, all that and helping you cope with stress, it helps you give you energy during the day so you can even sleep at night. It's sort of an amazing adaption. It, gives, it has the intelligence to give the, help support the body's own ability to respond to stress naturally, as opposed to kind of doing the job for you. It actually supports a healthy and natural response to stress. All right, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by Life Spa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.